I'd like to introduce you to my friend and patient. Um, Terry and I have had uh, quite a journey together uh, with her health care, and I wanted her to come and talk to y'all a little bit about her story, which is, a, uh, it's been quite a journey. You know, I spend a lot of time talking to patients about food and obesity, but that actually wasn't your problem. You had gained a lot of weight, but you had something called anasarca. You had fluid yes. up to your armpits when I first met you. Mm -hmm. That wasn't just too many cheeseburgers because you'd always had a very healthy lifestyle. Right. I really never stopped uh, working in my career, so I was doing a PREN part-time at the University of Houston Health Center there. And uh, it was maybe two or three days a month. But I noticed all of a sudden that uh, I normally can, as I say, clean a house in 35 minutes, put <laughs> dinner on, and by the time you get there in less than 45 minutes, I'm ready. I was slowing. I mm -hmm. wasn't as uh, sharp and perky as I normally was. That was my wake-up call. And as we talked, some friends and I, oh, let's take this, vitamin. You need to take vitamins. And finally I said, mm, mm that's not it. I stated, and my message to all women is to know your body and also get another opinion because that was the key, that was the driving factor, that I knew I wasn't eating a lot to gain all that weight. I wasn't gorging a lot of uh, unhealthy foods for me to really experience what I call uh, constipation and the elimination of fluids and those were some factors that I kept looking at to see what was going on. You had something that turned out to be very unusual and I think that was one of the confusing issues in you getting a diagnosis mm -hmm. and you ended up with pulmonary hypertension due to all of these chronic blood clots in your lung mm -hmm. and because of that your the right side of your heart which takes the fluid out of your body, was failing when I met you. Right. And, you know, I think it's much more difficult if you have something unusual because you don't fit into the normal algorithms that physicians normally think about to, mm -hmm. to take care of the majority of patients. And that why, that's why your case, I, th I believe, was confusing. They knew that you had right heart failure, but they had no idea why. Exactly. And then it was, and then we had to work backwards mm -hmm. and really when you gave me your history that you'd been working full time and had been perfectly fine right. up until that end of 2011, mm -hmm. that's what made me start thinking about this more unusual diagnosis. Because that's a very big surgery that you had actually. How many hours did they operate? Uh, they said total of 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the name of your surgery is called a thromboendarterectomy. And this is a very delicate, exacting surgery where they dissect out all of this organized clot into the smallest bits of your pulmonary vasculature than they can, that they can access. Tell me a little bit about, um, I know that I've sent you to cardiac rehab, and oh, yes. that's been quite a journey as well to get your strength back. Yes. Cardiac rehab has really been very uh, encouraging. I go, I attend three days a week, and uh, the ladies there work with me very closely in that we do my blood pressure, and we also do my mm -hmm. weight, and then we do the uh, treadmill and the bicycle, and now we're doing what I call strength training exercises. Right. So of course this week I had moved up to the three pound weights. Prior to that I was doing two pounds. So I'm really on the road. As I say, I'm really on the way. I can do the bicycle and treadmill for 20 minutes and that's working out very well. I'm not sure you could get out of bed at that point. I could get out of bed but with a little help. And into and a chair right next exactly. to the bed. That was about it. That was it. Uh -huh. So this is really great, 20 minutes on the bike and lifting weights. That's, That's pretty awesome. The ladies in the rehab are really proud of me. <laughs> if you were a woman who had didn't have medical friends, what would be some other areas that we could suggest that they get medical information? 
Well, of course, uh, the library, you read a lot. Uh, you attend health fairs, okay? Uh, in my case, um, that um, Go Red for Women luncheon where you just spoke with, uh, that really opens the doors to realize that we women do not have the same symptoms as the average heart patient, the male heart patient. Right. I'm glad. We, I'm glad you're better. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a whole lot better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I could even keep my grandbaby, who's I got a few gray hairs over that. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked out. <laughs>